Hi my friends, it's Aurel. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to discuss fertility tips for women over 35 who are considered geriatric or too old to get pregnant on their own and how I personally got pregnant at 42 naturally. I've had this question so many times since I announced I was pregnant. If you are new here, my name is Ro. My husband, who's not really my husband, I just call my husband because you know, my fiance, soon to be husband, that I refer to as husband because we've been together for a ridiculous amount of years, was serving a 213 year sentence in federal prison. So we never thought he was gonna get relief. He was finally awarded his release in August of 2020 because it was unfair. We finally got a judge to say, absolutely not, this is wrong, let him out now. Six weeks later, I got pregnant with our first child. I am 42 years old. So many people that watch my channel are waiting a long time for their loved ones to come home from prison as well. So you're like, tell me, tell me all the things. And if you're not there, but you're a little bit older and you're looking to get pregnant and you're having some issues or maybe you're single and you wanna get pregnant in the future, then I've got some information for you too. If you're not already subscribed, do that. And while we're talking about it, wasting time as always, give this video a thumbs up because it helps me out a ton in YouTube. Do it for baby C. How do you say no to a little miracle baby? My first tip for you is try to take the pressure out of it. When you're having sex to get pregnant, it becomes very rigid, it becomes very mechanical, methodical. I actually was speaking to somebody who was having the hardest time getting pregnant until she's like, you know what, I just gave up. I'm just going to have fun. She said when she and her husband were having sex to get pregnant, it took the fun out of it, they felt kind of almost like unless they did it very old school, just missionary, nothing fun or exciting or different positions or anything like that because they were trying to make a baby. They were trying to be respectful towards this baby that they were trying to make. It was just too much pressure. So she said, you know, as soon as she just lost that and was like one night, they had a couple drinks and were like, let's just have fun. And they weren't thinking about baby and they were doing just different things. That's when she got pregnant. For me personally, I wasn't trying to get pregnant. We were basically on our honeymoon. <laughs> we were catching up for lost time. That's how I'll say that. Making up for lost time, catching up on lost time, however you say that. We didn't think about making a baby. In fact, when Adam first got home, a lot of people were being so sweet because they knew I wanted kids. And they were like, you're 42 girl, let's go. So they were like, did you make a baby? How about making a baby? It's time to make a baby now, all within like the first week that he was home. And we were actually having issues in the bedroom for a couple of nights because we were both in our heads like, do we wanna make a baby though? Is it too soon? So we were just like, no, we're not trying. We're putting it out of our heads and it happened. So my advice there is to date each other again have sex again, like you're just learning each other. Get wild if you wanna get wild. Do not think about anything other than enjoying one another in each other's company and see where it takes you. I don't wanna disrespect anyone that's like, you wanna know how many times I try that? But we tend to get fixated on things like I need to have a baby and then think about that every time. But even if you don't get pregnant for a while and you're still having those fun, wild, crazy nights with the person that you're intimate with, you're having a fun, wild, crazy night. The other one is a hard pill to swallow, but I could say I lived this in my prison wife life. Be genuinely happy for people that are pregnant. I know it's so hard, and I've been on the receiving end of comments, people who are like, how dare you share your life? I can't get pregnant, that's all you talk about now. I'm leaving your channel. And I can relate in a way where I never, ever, except for once, got upset or jealous that somebody's husband was being released from prison or somebody's loved one was coming home from prison, even though my loved one didn't have an out date. It happened once, very early on. I'd become friendly with this woman and for about a year, we would chit chat in and out of visit. It was just nice to see a familiar face every time that you went through something traumatic with this person next to you. And so one time we're having a conversation on the way out of visit and I said, well, when's the next time you're coming? Maybe I can come on the same weekend. And she said, oh no, this was my last visit. He's getting out in two weeks. And I just remember feeling a knife through my heart and that twinge of jealousy. I've played it off and I said, oh, congratulations, I'm excited for you guys. And when I got in the car, I had to have a long talk with myself and I said, no, that is not you 
just because you're on this road, you're not gonna be jealous for other people. You're not gonna not celebrate their accomplishments because you're not there yet. You're not on the same page as life and there are wonderful things happening to them that aren't happening for you. Stay in your lane. Keep your eyes on your own paper. How many cliches can I keep saying to say the same thing? But celebrate the joy in others. When you see a pregnant mama, although I know it's hard because I lived it in a different experience, but when you see somebody with a big belly, instead of automatically thinking, look at what she's done in her life. They can't even afford it. I've been healthier. I could treat a baby better. I deserve it more than her. Switch that and think, wow, she's so lucky to be blessed with that opportunity. I'm next. I can't tell you how many times I said, I'm next. I can't tell you how many times I said, congratulations, you're one day closer and Lord knows I am too. So you, when you see that pregnant lady, she's one day closer to her delivery and having her little miracle, you're one day closer too. I know it sounds silly, but my gosh, positivity, putting out there those vibes goes so far. And if anybody could say that, I mean, anybody can say that, but if anybody can back that, it's a girl who stood by a man for 11 and a half years and just kept putting out that energy and putting it out and believing it into fruition. By looking at that woman's belly and thinking all those negative things, you're blocking all of those positive things from coming into your life. Think about it that way. And if you think about it, for years and years and years, Adam and I talked about our children, what it will be like when we have kids, what our kids will be like. You just kind of have to speak it into existence in whatever way that looks. Number three, get healthy. So many of the women that I spoke to when I was doing research for this video said it wasn't until they got into the best shape of their lives that they got pregnant. So whatever that looks like for you, exercise, dance, go for walks, move your body, cut soda, cut sugar, drink more water. Everybody knows or has their own version of what it means to be healthy. And you know when you're not doing it. And a lot of times when you're trying to have a baby and it's not happening, you get depressed. So what happens when a lot of people get depressed, you fall into bad habits and maybe you pick up smoking again or maybe you pick up drinking again. You start drowning your sorrows. You start eating your feelings. If you get yourself healthy and prepare your body to be able to create a baby and then make a baby and then build that baby, you know what I'm saying? So try whatever it is, just one thing. If you're a heavy soda drinker, try just to cut soda and then you could do something else. If you drive through McDonald's every single day because it's faster than making and bringing lunch to work, maybe take some time on Sundays to meal prep. Maybe take some time every evening to put together a healthier meal or some healthier snacks for you to bring with you to the office. It will go a long way to keeping your body healthy and making your eggs healthier for fertilization. Number four, get checked for fertility issues, both you and your husband. So this way you start with a baseline and you know what your options are. If you know that something's wrong, then you can work to fix it and then you can move forward as you're trying. But if you're just trying and trying and trying and nothing's happening and you don't realize that maybe his sperm count is really low, maybe there's something with you that you need some hormones or something like that, get checked and you'll know and then you can go from there. I'll say more on that in a minute coming up, but the next one, I'll just add this. I don't even know if this is fact or fiction, but I started taking a supplement called Sun Warrior Collagen. Probably like three or four weeks before I got pregnant, a few of my friends were talking about how much they loved collagen. I said to them, well, I'm vegan, so I can't take the traditional collagen because it's usually made out of bovine cow. So I will look for a vegan version. Within days after taking it, my body is so sensitive to anything that'll increase my estrogen. I noticed an estrogenic response. I noticed that my hips were filling in, my breasts were larger. I thought actually I was pregnant the month before I got pregnant because I was having such a severe estrogenic response to this supplement. And then one of my girlfriends later on told me, she said, 
usually vegan collagen is usually just made out of biotin. So I don't know if that specifically started to prep my body personally to get pregnant. But what I'm saying is there are supplements out there that can help prep your body for pregnancy. Pink Stork is a company that brought me on as an ambassador. I'm obsessed. Let me go get their package. They have all kinds of fertility products that people who represent the company, who follow the company, who are fans of the company, swear by. They have fertility teas. They have all kinds of stuff, not only just for fertility, but for PMS, for post baby, for prenatal, postnatal, all that stuff. They did send me this little ambassador package that I'll share with you guys. First of all, how sweet is this packaging? Hello, Roseanne. I wasn't even gonna do this, but while I'm talking about supplements, why not? Bringing women hope. And then it said this package was prayed over. And what I love about this company is the reason they took me on as an ambassador was because they liked my story. They empower women who are going through personal struggles. So I explained my story about how I use my struggles with Adam to inspire and encourage other women who are going through those same struggles that they can get through it, to help them through it. And they were like, yes, we wanna work with you. I was gonna put on this shirt for the video I did with their products, but I just started talking about this, reading my notes, and I was like, wait, this fits, duh. Faithfully female. That's their little logo. Oops. This cute little journal. Look at these cute little pink stork earrings. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put some of this stuff together for a giveaway for you guys. In the comments below, leave me a pink heart and I'm going to pick one of you guys to receive some of this fun stuff from this package. When you get gifts, you share. That's what your sisters do with you, right? Faithfully female pens. Stickers, all of this fun stuff. The wellness brand for women. Stuff for PMS, stuff if you want to become an ambassador. Discount code below. Oh, look at this, I didn't even see this. This little bag. So I'm gonna send one of you guys some swag from Pink Stork because I have it and I wanna share. I'll put the discount code in the description box below. You don't have to use it. I mean, you, you can get money off, so why not? But if you're looking for something to help with fertility, that is their forte. Number five is Make sure you track your cycle. There are so many apps out there. I used P-Tracker app for a really long time. Not every cycle is the traditional 28 days. Most people are not the traditional 28 days. And then once you know that, then you can start tracking ovulation and missed periods and things like that. And the advantage and the blessing of being a little bit older is you know your body so well now and you've been getting your period for so long, you know more about your body. You know how to start tracking it and you know how to keep up with this stuff and you know when things are off. Really get in tune with your body and start listening. Something you can do to help get in tune with your body if you're just one of those people that like ignores things or you don't feel things, start meditating, start doing yoga. You could even start doing prenatal yoga to put it out there. Gently get your body moving, getting in the flow, getting used to feeling things. Go on YouTube. I'm sure there's tons of meditations and yoga classes and all kinds of gentle things for mommies who are trying to conceive. Number seven, prepare your eggs. This kind of goes hand in hand with getting healthy. Get your levels checked so you have a baseline and you can compare back once you start trying aggressively to get pregnant. Now there are at home hormone tests that you can get and you could do them right in the comfort of your own home. I know one specifically is called Let's Get Checked. I never needed it, but I've heard good things about that one. So that's one. Just make sure that your levels are good. Go to your doctor if you want to. Get your blood work done. Get your levels checked. Make sure everything looks good. And then you wanna start doing things like adding supplements, like the Pink Stork Fertility Supplements, or supplements specifically for where you need them based off of your personal blood results. So if your estrogen is low or your progesterone is low, there are supplements you could take to increase your progesterone or your estrogen. You also, going back, want to try to eat 
whole unprocessed foods as much as possible because processed foods are your body is breaking them down your body's becoming inflamed by those foods so you're full of mucus inflammation causes mucus it's a result of inflammation so it's more difficult for you to get pregnant when you have all that inflammation in your body don't get too hard on yourself if you have just fallen off the wagon it's quarantine you're depressed you're not getting pregnant you're depressed seems like everybody else is having babies and you can't, every bad vice and habit is back in your life, take baby steps. Just remove one thing, soda, sugar, those chips that you're eating at night, that extra bowl of ice cream every single day, one thing at a time. And then when you get over that, when you feel like you can add another thing, get rid of the next thing and then the next thing. And those little changes over time will become huge changes and you'll feel so much healthier and you will be so much healthier that you'll be in a position where your body's ready. And the last tip that I have for you is to start monitoring the chemicals that are in your environment. Things like plastics leak estrogens into the products you're using or consuming that can cause issues with fertility when you ingest them. So heating up food in plastic, drinking out of plastic bottles, actually freezing plastic, letting the water, let's say you put water in a plastic bottle and you put it in the freezer, you allow that to freeze, then you thaw it out and drink ice cold water. That's really bad because heating and also freezing extreme temperatures will leach chemicals, will leach plastics into the liquid that's inside of the plastic bottle and then that's, that's gonna cause an estrogenic reaction in your body. So not only in the foods, like you probably wanna be careful heating up stuff in the microwave in a plastic dish, try to go for glass, try to go for microwave safe things, go for thicker plastics if you are storing your food in plastic containers, hard plastics that you can knock on that's almost like glass or glass containers are even better. Also watch your cosmetics, not only plastic containers, but also you wanna try at this point when you're really sensitive and trying to get pregnant to avoid products that can cause a chemical reaction in your body that can be endocrine, disru endocrine disruptor, take three, endocrine disruptors and cause your estrogen and your progesterone to go out of whack. Try to use products that are paraben free, chemical free, as natural as possible. If you can read the labels and you can pronounce most everything in the ingredient list, that's a double thumbs up. There are so many companies out there now that are promoting natural ingredients. Doesn't mean it has to be organic. I know that that's expensive, but you can get products from Walmart and Target and discount drugstores. For example, Shea Moisture are natural that don't have chemicals and they're not gonna disrupt the hormones in your body, preventing you from getting pregnant. A huge one as well is try to use, when you're drinking out of bottles, use bottles that are BPA free. Try to avoid deodorants with aluminum in them, which is hard. And it took me a really long time to find one that agreed with my body. I went through a couple of years of being the stinky girl when I was testing deodorants without aluminum, but there are brands out there. For me, the best brand is Schmitz. It is the only aluminum free deodorant brand that works for me and will stand up to a heavy workout. A lot of people swear by, oh my gosh, what's that one in Target? Native, a lot of people swear by Native, they love the scents. For me, it just didn't stand up to my hard, long workouts. But play with brands, consider getting rid of aluminums in deodorant, in beauty products, and also try not to cook too much with aluminum foil, if you can, or in aluminum pans. Every once in a while is fine, but everything in moderation. Other hormone disruptors and in ingredients, let me just read this to you really quick, just so you are aware and you can look out for it. Plastics, aluminum, parabens, BPA, BHA, BHT are all hormone disruptors. And again, if you have them in the products in your house, my advice, what I've done in the past when I was trying to go more green and more natural after my mom's cancer was use up what you have 
And then as you're replacing it, do some research and try to find something that's within the same price range so you're not breaking the bank. And you don't have to replace everything all at once as things run out. Then try to replace that with something that's a little bit better. Rome was not built in a day. And like I said earlier, small little changes over time will add up and they'll make a world of a difference. More than anything else, it is so much easier coming out of my mouth than for you to hear, but try not to stress because stress is the number one worst endocrine disruptor thing that you could do to your body. Try to figure out a way to do some sort of stress relief, meditation, yoga, journaling, getting away, just somehow getting out of your head and then have fun trying, right? Because even if you try unsuccessfully, you're still winning if you're trying a lot. You know what I mean? Getting closer to your partner. I'm such an anxious person. I think the fact that I wasn't trying helped me get pregnant at 42 naturally because I didn't have any stress. I've been extremely healthy. I drink a ton of water. I eat a ton of fruits and vegetables. I take the supplements and the vitamins that my body needs. And I worked for years and years and years to get myself, my period, regulated through all of the work that I did on my body. So I hope you can take something from this. And no matter what the outcome, I love you and I am pulling for you. I almost said keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to having your miracle baby and living the life of your dreams. How's that? I haven't said that in a really long time. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're interested in other videos with me, click one of the ones that pop up on the screen. If they're not there, you could always just go back on my channel. I love you guys. Let me know what you want videos on below. Put a pink heart in the comments. If you want to win some goodies out of this box, I will send them. I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.